guys, welcome back to the channel where I cover missing persons, unsolved cases, crime news, and more. Well, it's Friday, TGIF to everyone, and I guess Sarah's probably pretty happy today. Uh, I will play the uh, her appearance in court today, but to get to the point, uh, Bankowitz was allowed to withdraw as her attorney and we have a new attorney uh, that has been announced attorney number seven i don't know if we've ever had anyone have as many attorneys as sarah boone that said uh she wrote some letters again this was actually before today's hearing to to judge wooten and she wanted to express all of her concerns yet again with Bankowitz and her case. So I'm going to go through that. It says 16 pages on the Google Doc, but it's actually eight pages because for some reason they skip a page in between. I, I have no idea why. All right, so this was actually, this is actually written on August 26th. Um, it was filed on the 7th of uh september which was yesterday thursday another um handwritten boon uh special uh, she states a hundred more days of no communication and of course she's addressed this to judge wayne c wooten re sarah boone and there's her case number judge wooten how do you feel about your attorney withdrawing during an attempted video visit by a misrepresented, shifty reporter, and she has that in quotes, this is how I was made aware of my quote-unquote attorney, Frank J. Bankowitz, cowardly and for the second time trying to ungracefully bow out of my case. So I guess she wasn't told by Bankowitz first, which that that's really kind of crappy, to be honest with you. Regardless of how he feels about her, he should have told her first. Mr. Matt Johnson, please honor the integrity and ethics of a real reporter and not camouflage yourself as my quote-unquote friend in order to push your way through the rules and regulations of the correctional facility. Quote-unquote professional is also an option when scheduling, but cl clearly does not pertain to you. Just don't schedule at all as I have nothing to report to you or Court TV altogether. Yeah, she's a real fan of Court TV, as we all know. You're not even a real news channel and only add to the confusion and hysterics wrongfully, illegally, and inappropriately concocted in my case. Do not contact. So she doesn't want to speak to Matt Johnson. I guess that's pretty clear. From my perspective... Am I surprised my attorney is trying yet again to give up completely? No. Is it a blessing? Yes. Let's be honest. Frank J. Benkowitz is a dud of an attorney. He is unprofessional, hides, lies, and is disrespectful. I had a feeling when other attorneys spoke about him, winced, sighed, or rolled eyes, saying they have some of his clients, and after finding his three public reprimands i announced to the court in which he said pissed him off quote unquote being the reason for his first attempted withdrawal this was going to be an adventure but nonetheless hoped for the best well everything with you is kind of an adventure sarah let's just be honest about that this has all been one adventure after another Unfortunately, I seem to have gotten the worst. Thankfully, there are many other professional and scrupulous, valiant attorneys still available. And hopefully after all my previous letters and six withdrawals to date, not by my choice, Judge Wooten, you will remove the blindfold this time when throwing your quote-unquote darts of justice at the quote, remember everyone has constitutional rights and should be treated Fairly, unquote, dartboard. And you wear glasses, so let's go for the bullseye, please. Thank you in advance for hopefully carrying this time. Sarah, I'd be a little careful when you talk to Judge Wooten. Just, a, just my advice. Also, 
if you are insistent on continuing to be my judge, I don't think he has too much of a choice on that, but you know, hey, as revolution is supposed to be every two years, I'm ongoing for now, and you've stated to me in your courtroom previously, I have not because I ask not, may you please observe and act independently as a judge and utilize your judicial authority to judicially maintain forward direction of proper, lawful, ethical treatment and respect of the client in any case, effective communication between all parties, especially the client and attorney, is being made, productive regular progress is being achieved, and all around fairness and in every aspect is consistent. Aren't you tired of getting my letters always asking about the same questions, concerns, and drab information? I'm going to answer for him here and say, I think he probably is. I think he, he, whenever he gets a letter from, it says from Sarah Boone, he probably sighs very loudly. Please do not ignore and avoid what I have been, what I have to say any longer as I'm sure the taxpayers are unapproving of their tax dollars. Mine too. I don't think you're paying taxes in jail, uh, Sarah. Being wasted for all my attorneys, you keep blundering. Hmm. It took almost 14 months before my quote, I told you so moment with Bankowitz and all my other attorneys, 42 months total. Please also see finally the absolute unfairness, fabrications, impediments, illegalities, and dysfunctions ongoing in my case and how truly unmistakably ransacked by the justice system, that's in quotes, and perverted by the whole world my entire case has been and become. Add yourself also to the mayhem, hype, and added difficulties. She doesn't like Wooten either. It's becoming apparently so clear. I don't know. I have an unfair opportunity at everything with all the predisposed, non-permissive, illegally distributed case altering sensitive information and details spread globally for everyone's viewing except me. My hand is known before the cards are even out of the box. There's not a bell anywhere that hasn't already been rung for all to hear. Seeds have been planted all illegally and unfairly. For the monumental amount of time allowing the world to abuse and devastate my private case information, lack of proper orders, not having an appropriate attorney, and non-existent security and protection of any kind, for all said information becoming so easily accessible, mutated, and shared without my permission and before my trial, it is unfair and unlawful that a heavily prejudiced, ignorant, incorrect prejudgment has been made as a result. This could have been stopped, lessened, or averted if someone was doing their job correctly. I am still doing mine by telling you so. I am not wrong. Okay, hold on a second, Sarah. All right. We know you don't like that your video, your videos of George in the suitcase and you telling him to F off and all that are out there, but they've been out there and body cams and all that. Well, see, there's this thing called freedom. Uh, you know, f FOIAs and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, it's going to get out there. In this day and age, if you make a video or you're on a body cam or surveillance, pretty much any of that stuff, and you commit a crime, you're it's going to get out there on the World Wide Web and YouTube, TikTok, what have you. So, it, there's just no way you can take it back. No, I still believe it all depends on how much money, notoriety, and benefits anyone, everyone can get for themselves. And however, no matter the destructive caused, destruction caused, or the omnibus irre, irre, irreparable shadow made along the very lucrative way, a system for all the wrong reasons. As for Bankowitz and his quote-unquote irreconcilable differences, this means because I asked again about his quote phantom phone numbers and any progress occurring since not speaking to him in months and after. 
All right, here we go. We got some numbers here. You know, Sarah is always good with her numbers. 408 days, 58 weeks plus 9,792 hours of his quote unquote representation from the date of appointment 7 11 2022 to withdraw attempt on 8 23 with only six in person meetings totaling plus or minus it looks like seven hours out of 9,792 four 15 minute video visits and two phone numbers given, zero working, zero calls answered, 10 letters from me, the client trying to communicate, no response, eight letters from me, client to judge, no response, Pro proactively, four letters from me, client to my investigator, asking him to attempt communication on my behalf to Bankowitz, five known attempts by investigator, see the 8 to 2023 20, letter, yeah, we saw that, by himself, directly and on my behalf, no response. I'm curious who your investigator is, Sarah. Would you would you care to drop a name on that one? Nine attempts made by the outside sources on my behalf, including phone calls, voicemails, emails, no response. Also, trying to use recycled components in my case, no discovery, witness list, research, orders, instructions, records, depositions, downloads, etc. after 13 months. Nothing but confirmation of his lack of professionalism, principles, disrespect, lies, and not caring. And please note, 11 out of 13 months were are with no communication, none in any form or forms. Okay, a couple things here. If he truly, I said this before, okay, if he truly didn't meet with you in some capacity or he truly wasn't responding to these phone calls, Sarah, that is something that is concerning. Okay. That's, that is legitimate. Uh, regardless or regardless. Okay. That's, that's me. I completely agree with you on that said, you're kind of a really, really difficult client and with a court appointed lawyer, which is what you have because obviously you don't have any funds to hire your own lawyer. And if you did, you would be able to kind of um, form your case better on that end. You kind of have restrictions on a lot of things. Uh, most of these attorneys have multiple cases on the table and they're just doing whatever they can for each of their clients. But I will agree with the one thing that Bankowitz doesn't seem to have communicated with you well enough. That said, I just think the two of you have butted heads way, way too many times. And I think your letters are a big, big part of the issues. The only difference is I want progress, productivity, honesty, respect, and results. If he were such a professional attorney, those are in quotes, from the beginning and not selling me on his quote unquote stable of witnesses, historical background, and all his abundant resources, he wouldn't be still avoiding and covering his behind, covering behind his now second attempt to withdraw. Number two per motion to withdraw. Clearly everyone can see anyone not lobotomized. Not sure why she put that in there. In my slides, would be highly unsatisfied with Bankowitz's overall performance as an attorney. See prior data. Yeah, we've gotten a lot of your data. That I can tell you. And no dedication has been made on his part in my case or any productive progress or effort. What time has been put forth solely? The seven out of 7,792 in 13 months. Number three, promotion to withdraw. And as I reminded Bankowitz during one of four video visits and him repeatedly telling me how busy he is with all of his other murder cases after, again, no communication for months, I politely raised my hand to the camera where he could see and said, murder case. I am your client also and have been. When do I get to go to trial like the other clients? He said he had to think about everything and disconnected. No word since. 100 days later, except for the withdrawal, I learned about from Court TV, not him. Number four, per motion to withdraw. Judge Wooten, with everything I have stated and all my information produced to you and all my previous letters, so you are aware, 
Clearly, Bankowitz should not continue being my attorney. Wouldn't you agree? Clearly, you should have listened and reviewed much earlier when I was trying to communicate to you 10 letters ago. Just about him. Please listen and include me going forward. It is my right. So this page was upside down, so I had to save it and flip it so I can go back to the other one. So this one may be harder for y'all to read. Uh, so this would be page six. With that being said, and because in the past you have stated to me you have other priorities not allowing me rightful, appropriate time to speak in your courtroom when I am allowed permittance to my meetings and I am on your schedule for that day, four times going to court with Benkowitz, total times with all other attorneys, three, uh, seven times in ongoing four years. One, April 29th, 2022, first attorney withdrawn attempt, judge made a reuse twice, May 10th, 2022 is number two, First uh, attorney withdraw attempt agreed and granted. Uh, number three, December 27th, 2022. Six attorney withdraw attempt denied. Uh, number four, February 10th, uh, 2023. Status hearing carryover. Number five, March 31st, 2023. Status hearing carryover. Uh, number six would be May 25th, 2023, status hearing carry over. Judge stated I was delaying trial, me, hence my letter dated 629-23, hand delivered, second copy, 721-23. 7, July 21st, 2023, status hearing carry over. Judge stated he has other priorities for the day when I was trying to address the court. Please grant Frank J. Bankowitz's motion to withdraw, dated 8-22-23, as my attorney. I, Sarah Boone, permit Judge Wayne C. Wooten to please, to release, excuse me, Frank J. Bankowitz entirely from my case for obvious aforementioned reasons stated. I will allow withdrawal when it should be termination. We all know it. Me and my hope next in the meantime, of the selection of my next attorney, uh, I'm not exactly sure what that means, aim please, and am going forward, please enable and support me in still trying to utilize my constitutional rights as a still proud citizen of the United States and stop willingly actively allowing the violations of the said rights. See previous letter dated 5-15-23. Please include me. Please listen to what I have to say. No one else does or has or has that it's my case. Yes, Sarah, we are quite, quite aware it's your case. And uh, again, she is very, very organized in all her numbers, her dates completely. Hopefully, futuristically, with a better, more appropriate, professional attorney of your choosing, less letters, if any, will be generated, and more time you will have to dedicate to your all of your quote-unquote priorities you made known to me in the past. Please know also, Your Honor, I know I am not priority, as you condescendingly and incorrectly stated, not I am making myself out to be or ever have been in anything my entire life. I am a client to my attorney, now 7th and all prior, an inmate to the county jail and, quote, criminal, unquote, case for your uh, right over judgment. Still, clearly after yet another letter from me and another withdrawal, not by my choice, and 42 uneventful months later, still looking for the starting line and seven times more. Nothing has been made priority. Please help Bankowitz wipe the sweat from his brow and inform him he can stop the self-sabotage. He is no longer my attorney. Amen. I don't know where that came in. My perseverance is real. So is my truth. I can't wait to meet the bullseye. Court appointed. Audaciously gratitude, Sarah Boone. 
And then she adds here, important, please send me a copy of this letter as the court used to consistency so I have receipt and know it was received and hopefully read. I do not have the resources being in jail still to make this needed copy myself nor the penny to rewrite. Hopefully my next letter will be less involved from all the necessary remedies being made. Also, my attorney is really an attorney. Thank you in advance for the copy. And ten, in front of she, she puts 10 pages. You're carrying in precious time. I will look for in the mail once the copy has been mailed. Again, so grateful, Sarah Boone. Woo! So that is her current letter that was, like I said, it was filed, scanned into her court docs yesterday, September 7th. Yeah. So I am going to play the court the court hearing today for dismissing, withdrawing her current her current uh, appointed attorney, Frank Bankowitz. All right, let's get right to it. This is now Sarah's favorite <laughs> favorite news channel, Court TV, as she's obviously not too happy with at least one of their reporters at this point per her recent letter. The Boone case. State of Florida versus Sarah Boone, 2020 CF 2603, state. Dave Cacciatore on behalf of the state. Defense. Frank Bankowitz. Please raise your right hand. Please solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you shall give should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes. Right. Can I have JAC announce themselves as well? Yes, Audrey Moore for JAC. All right. So we have multiple matters scheduled uh, this morning, one of which is Mr. Bankwitz's motion to withdraw. My reading of the law is I feel like I have to address that motion first and rule on that before I can address any other motions that would be uh, heard today. So, Mr. Bankwitz, I'll start with you. Tell me why you're moving to withdraw. Judge, the, le the letters that have been coming to your honor, uh, the derogatory berating of my services in this case, uh, I can't effectively represent her. Uh, I, she doesn't trust me. She calls me a, a dud, I think, a buffoon, uh, on and on and on and on. And no one should have to endure that type of uh, derogatory comments and expect to effectively represent someone, especially in a murder case. Ms. Boone, I read your letter dated August 26, 2023, and your letter dated August 30th, 2023. And just so we're clear, I read all of the letters that you send to the court. Whether I respond or not is based on what's in the letter and whether I'm asked to actually do something that's within my purview as a judge or not. If I understand correctly, you have now decided that you think it would be best, in fact, if Mr. Bankowitz was allowed to withdraw. Is that correct? Yes. All right. And you understand by him withdrawing, I'll have to appoint another attorney. Do you understand that? Yeah. And that attorney's not standing here, so we're not going to be able to address, and I'll give the state a chance to talk to me as well, but assuming I grant this, we won't be able to address the other issues that were docketed for today, which means I'm going to have to reset your case for a later date. Do you understand that? I'm not sure what items it is you're speaking of. I haven't received a copy yet of the letter. Right. So we also were having a hearing today in regards to authorization for payment for an expert that your attorney believes he needs to defend you in an issue about the compensation of that expert, which is why JAC is participating today. I don't know if your next lawyer is going to think that that expert's the right person to use or whether they're going to go a different route after consulting with you. And even if they did, they're not standing here. And once Mr. Banquets is out, he's out. He can't argue the motion. So do you understand that? I fully understand. All right. Mr. Cacciatore, normally the state takes no position in these issues, but there are limited circumstances when 
The state does it take a position. So are you taking a position on this motion to withdraw, Mr. Cacciatore? No, this would be one of those times where we would be not taking a position. All right. So uh, I'm going to grant Mr. Bankwitz's motion to withdraw. I'm going to appoint find my list. attorney Winston Hobson to represent Ms. Boone. Uh, in regards to the other matters scheduled today, I'm going to take no action on them at this time until Mr. Hobson can. Well, in regards to the motion involving JAC, I'm simply going to take no action on that motion at this point in time until Mr. Hobson has a chance to review it and determine whether he wants to proceed with that motion. I will address the pretrial because today was also supposed to be pretrial. Here's what we'll do. Let me just get my calendar up. As far as pretrial conference, I'm going to set this case for pretrial conference on Tuesday, November 28th, and a trial period starting Monday, December 11th. I think any earlier period of time would be unrealistic for Mr. Hobson to get on board, get up to speed with the discovery, and determine how he wants to proceed in regards to any experts. But I will set a status hearing on the case prior to that. I'll set a status hearing on the case Monday, October 30th. 2023 at 10 a.m. That'll be for the purpose of making sure that Mr. Hobson's on board, some sense of where he thinks are things are, uh, how realistic he thinks the November pretrial is, any other matters I need to address with him at that time. Now, Ms. Boone, in just a minute, they're going to take you back to the Orange County Jail. I'm going to suggest that you talk to Mr. Hobson about the various other issues you raised in your letter dated August 30th, 2023. One other thing I want to talk to you about, we had this conversation once in the past. Clearly, your working relationship with Mr. Banquets was such that it deteriorated to the point where the two of y'all just couldn't work together to defend your case. So I'm not going to try to referee um, how that played out, why that unfolded the way it did. But one thing I want to caution you about, if this becomes a problem on another court-appointed attorney, I'm going to look more closely at what the alleged disputes are. You have a right to a court-appointed lawyer. There are certain decisions a defendant gets to make in the defense of their case that are absolutely theirs, such as whether they go to trial or not, such as whether they testify or not. But there are many decisions in a case that a lawyer gets to make. And while you certainly have a right to consult with your lawyer and discuss with your lawyer, they don't automatically just do whatever you say they use their professional judgment and experience and look at the evidence, look at the law, and do the best they can. Also, you've got court-appointed counsels. I've explained to you before, court-appointed counsel rarely have the luxury of representing one person. 
and only having one case to focus on. I have concerns that your expectations of what any court-appointed counsel might do as far as spending time with you and the depth and degree of communication may be unrealistic expectations. You always have the right to retain a lawyer to represent you, and then that's between you and that lawyer. You can demand whatever expectations that you have as part of that agreement. But when it's a court-appointed lawyer, you have to accept and understand that they have other cases, other courtrooms, other responsibilities. And I'm cognizant of that when I'm addressing these types of issues about communication. So that's just food for thought, nothing to do today. I don't need a response from you. I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that and we're thinking about that as we proceeded forward. So again, the court minutes reflect that I am con court continuing pretrial. I have granted a motion to withdraw. I have appointed Mr. Hobson to represent the defendant, and I'm taking no action on the motion, the ex parte motion for a cost directed uh, where GAC is responding. Ms. Boone will be returned to the Orange County Jail pending disposition of her case. So we have a new attorney assigned to her case, Bankowitz gets what he wants which is to withdraw and obviously Sarah is totally on board with that so the two of them are basically butting heads so Judge Wooten said fine let's just do that however he's warning her that that if this becomes a problem with this next attorney well that may be a whole nother story she doesn't look too pleased from what I can tell about what he's telling her about how these are court appointed attorneys and that they can't spend all their time with her. That said, I hope uh, uh, the next attorney, which is Winston uh, Robson, works out uh, better for her. I did look up the attorney, uh, Orange County, uh, this attorney, and there's not much information on him that I could find thus far. I'm gonna continue my research to see what I can find out about him. Uh, but obviously he's with the Florida Bar and he's, uh, I believe he's been practicing for, for quite some time uh, in the area. So uh, we shall see how well uh, these two, how this new attorney rather works with Sarah. But I, I honestly do hope that this works out better for her. You know, you know, I'm, it's just so, February, February is going to be four years that this, this, this a whole thing happened, you know, and yeah, yeah, we had the, the pandemic and all that, but I think that this trial, well, first of all, I think my personal opinion is that she could have pled down, but unfortunately I think it, I'm going to assume that that's been suggested by at least more than one attorney. But um, I think if she would have tried uh, earlier on to um, potentially plead down to maybe involuntary manslaughter or, or what have you, which is like a 10 or so year sentence, and she might have gotten good behavior maybe like eight, seven, eight years. Um, and she's been in there almost four, so she could have been, you know, halfway through her sentence, you know, really. Uh, but... You know, I mean, I think of her son, you know, because he's like, he was in, I believe, in elementary school when this happened in 2020. So, it's like, I don't know, I don't know if she gets to see him while she's, while she's in jail. I don't know how that goes for this poor kid. So, you know, that to me is a tough thing, being a mom and, you know, she's got this, you know, little son out there and uh, obviously he's living with his dad, her ex. So, I don't know. But I, I think it's just to me, I feel like I look back at this case and I look back at what happened and I really don't think my opinion is that I think that they were both drunk and I think I think that she zipped him up in there and I don't know, obviously we don't know what happened, you know, from there on in. I think she recorded him. She decided to verbally, you know, this, that, and the other thing. She was drunk. She was probably annoyed at him. I think there's such and such great day that she was describing to detectives and all that, how they were having a great day. I think some sort of dispute ended that during this, this hide and go, hide and seek game that they were playing. 
and I think that she did that those videos which were super like a huge mistake um, and I think that she probably assumed that he could get out of there I do believe that portion of it and I think she went upstairs and I legitimately believe she did fall asleep and I think that she she I don't I personally don't think she meant to leave him in there to to die but unfortunately that's what happened so that's kind of why she's in the position that she's in but uh yeah well let me know what you guys think of all this new stuff how Bankowitz is out Robson's in I'll uh, keep looking up some more information on the new uh, attorney, and I'm sure we'll hear more about that in the coming weeks. So it looks like uh, October 30th, uh, by then we'll hear something from the new uh, uh, attorney, and I guess we'll uh, see what's going on, see if he keeps these battered spouse defense or if they decide to go with some sort of other defense. All right, guys, again, let me know what you think in the comments. And with that said and done, that's all I've got for this one. I hope you have a great rest of the day, and most of all, stay safe.